How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. Today's a good day to talk about Gleyber Torres. If you watched yesterday's game, unfortunate loss, but Gleyber Torres was an absolute monster at two homers and back-to-back at-bats, and he's showcasing that offensive efficiency that we really hope to see this season. Now, the defense hasn't been as great as it was in 2022. Um, hopefully, he can iron those kind of deficiencies out as the season progresses, but offensively, he's been pretty solid. I'd say he's probably one of the better second basemen in the league in that regard, but you know, Looking at his future contract, looking at what that might kind of appear as and um, what kind of deal he is, you know, worth, I guess I would say. And if he's more of a value piece in a prospective trade right now as the deadline approaches in a couple months here, um, we want to kind of discuss our perspectives into if he should be traded or if he is a long-term solution in the infield. Right now we have Glaber, we have uh, Josh Donaldson about to return. And in my opinion, he's going to cause more of a l- infield logjam than is necessary. You know, I really like the infield that we have right now, Volpe, Torres, Rizzo, and DJ LeMahieu. I think that's our ideal um, four-man infield. Um, uh, but then, you know, adding Donald into the mix in his supposed everyday role should mess with things. And I don't necessarily like that idea, but it seems like that's the direction they're going in. But Ryan, before we dive into Gleyber Torres, how he's performing this year and kind of our thoughts on what we uh, we see his value as right now for this Yankee team. How you doing today, my friend? I'm all right. You know, looking at the Yankees infield situation, it's a really weird logjam because they have a lot of decisions they're going to have to make very soon. Like, not as very soon as in, like, you know, tomorrow, but, you know, even saying the end of the offseason. Like, that's a pretty uh, short amount of time to have to decide, like, whether Oswald Peraz is the future at, in your infield or if Labor Torres is going to be here for a long time, right? Um, you know, the way you struggled lately, and that's kind of opening the door for Donaldson and one of Peraz or Glaber to kind of, you know, force themselves into a world where they can all play together. But um, kind of the the weird thing here is that the Yankees have Glaber, who can really only play second base. They haven't tried him at third. I don't think they will. Um, you could put Peraz at third, sure, but like again, it's so weird to take a guy who's a prospect who's established himself because of his defense at shortstop and then not play him at shortstop. Like that, that doesn't make much sense to me. If they wanted to have Volpe learn third base, I think that would make unbelievable amounts of sense, but I don't think they want to do that. Again, you know, it just feels like sometimes the Yankees are unprepared to handle, like, certain positional battles or log jams, and this is definitely one of those situations. Again, it it does not make any sense to me why the Yankees have Oswald Peraza if they have no intentions of playing him at shortstop. That's – it's not – it's not not even being unprepared. It's just stupid at that point, right? You know, people are going to say, well, Volpe won the shortstop job. We didn't sign Correa or Turner or, Bo- or Bogarts or Seager because we wanted to bring in Anthony Volpe and have to be the shortstop. Well, that's called sunk cost fallacy, right? And I don't buy into that. So I think the Yankees just want to have the most talent on the field available. Um, Oswald Peraza has a 143 WRC plus right now in AAA. He's playing really well. He's hitting really well. His numbers are really well, uh, really good in AAA. And at some point, he's going to force that conversation of, hey, like he should be a major leaguer, right? Um, there's a certain point in time in which you're hitting so well at AAA over an extended period of time where you're just that good, right? You're just a good hitter at that point, right? And you should just be respected as a better offensive prospect. Um, and in Peraza's case, I think we're reaching that threshold, right? But in the same vein, Glaber Torres, right? The Yankees have a guy who's a second baseman, by the way, who's slashing 264, 351 with a 467 uh, slugging percentage. And he walks a little under, uh, uh, just a little under 12% of the time. And he strikes out under 13% of the time, right? Like, offensively speaking, Glaber Torres is excellent, right? Um, inconsistent, yes. But excellent, also, yes. So, you know, you're at a point where you don't really want to trade Glaber. You can't you can't really afford to lose Glaber. And if you're looking at the guy in the infield that should kind of get moved off of, it looks like it's LeMahieu, right? LeMahieu could be transitioned to more of a utility role. I think that would work, work really well for him. Um, I know Donaldson coming back is going to, you know, they're going to give him an everyday role and they're going to kind of see what he has. Sure. I mean, I, I understand. I can understand wanting to see what you have in Josh Donaldson. But in the same vein, it's like, look, we are on, it's May 25th. Um, Oswald Peraza currently has a WRC plus above 140 in, in AAA, um, and he's got to be like you got to figure out what you're doing with him at this point. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't, I, I just don't, I don't feel, I don't see a reason for him not to be getting major league at bats. You know, I, I'm seeing Willie Calhoun get major league at bats again. No disrespect to Willie Calhoun, but you know. He's not better than Oswald Peraza. I know that Stan's coming back soon. He's going to start a rehab assignment today or tomorrow if the imaging is clean. Um, And that would be really encouraging, obviously. 
But then again, like, we're just at a point in the season where it's like, you know, you kind of know who's good. You kind of know who's not good. Um, you know who's, you know, kind of in the middle, right? There's still a couple guys trying to figure out. I think LeMahieu's one of them. Um, is, like, Oswald Peraza being, not being here why the Yankees lost yesterday? No, like, I'm not going to insinuate that. Um, but they're going to have to make a decision eventually, and I think the wrong decision would be bailing on one of these two midseason. Unless you're getting a really good player back, it these two guys can help you right now. You can you can figure out moving off of Glaber in the offseason if you need to, um, but unless I'm getting a big-time bat for Glaber at this point, it just it doesn't feel like the right thing to do to trade him. So um, definitely a weird spot for the Yankees to be in, but at, at this point, you got you got to just let your good you got to let your good players keep playing on this team, you know? Yeah, I mean, look, you, you mentioned Oswald Peraza a lot here, and this might be like a mid-hot take. Um, I don't know if you agree with this. Many people may, many people not. I would love to hear perspectives on it in the YouTube comments nonetheless. I would consider sending Oswaldo Cabrera down and promoting Peraza um, just to get Peraza more opportunities because we know that Peraza is an elite defender, right? Now, the offensive portion of his game is yet to be kind of identified. We haven't seen enough of a sample size to make any conclusions. I would I would say that the way that uh, Oswaldo Cabrera is playing right now, they've kind of stopped utilizing him as an everyday player. He's kind of an every other day player at this point in time, um, really just supplementing fatigue and whatnot. And offensively, he's really struggling. I mean, his walk rate is really, is really bad. I think it's about 6.4%. He has not been great this year. Maybe he needs to go back down to AAA and, and get a little bit of mojo back and his confidence back. And then you can kind of uh, play off the injuries that naturally occur and you can promote him again you can elevate him you know there's no harm in doing that just getting guys back into the flow um, and seeing what happens there but maybe that's a bad idea maybe it's a decent idea you know you can't really it's hard to tell unless you try but Oswald Peraza you mentioned is, is performing very well at the minor league level the problem is you know what is his value against Josh Donaldson right Josh Donaldson provides you good defense that's objectively true Oswald Peraza provides you great defense, and that's objectively true. He could be a long-term solution at third, at third base. The Yankees aren't even giving him a chance. If you're going to call, get, if you're going to get back Josh Donaldson and you're going to play him every single day over DJ LeMahieu on the hot corner, it, the only reason that is happening, in my opinion, there's, there's, I guess, there's two reasons. One, you want his veteran leadership, right? He can't play anywhere but third base. The second point here is that. Brian Cashman is not willing to eat the money and he's too, he's trying to save face. Like that's, that's the other reason. There's no other reasons in my opinion that he's on this roster um, aside from saving face because of the contract and giving the team a little bit of a veteran leadership. And the the truth is, is that offensively, we don't know what version of him we're going to get. It's probably going to be a bad one based on his last season, the way he started this year. Um, It's not great. Now he changed his um, batting stance. Maybe he has this crazy comeback at 37 years old and puts together a great season, but I highly doubt that's going to happen. Um, it would be awesome if he did. You know, obviously, I, I, I hope that's the case because we want the Yankees to win. But the argument between Peraza playing third base and Josh Donaldson playing third base is simply like you have to try to see what you're getting in your younger player in Peraza because they're not utilizing him, because they're not favoring him over anyone on this roster. I mean, for goodness sake, like you said, Willie Calhoun, like why is he getting reps over Peraza? Like why is even Oswald Cabrera getting reps sometimes in the infield over Peraza? He should be getting those opportunities. He earned them. And the same could be said. Anthony Volpe went into spring training and knocked Peraza out of his starting job. Why isn't Peraza being given the same opportunity to do that to somebody else? You know, why isn't Peraza being given an opportunity to beat out Oswaldo Cabrera in the infield as a utility piece there? Why isn't he being given the opportunity to compete against Josh Donaldson as a starter? Why isn't he getting the same chance that Anthony Volpe got? You know, it, because he's a t- because Volpe was a top prospect and because Peraza isn't. You know, there there there's inconsistencies to the Yankees' decision making that does kind of bewilder me, and I don't know what they're thinking. Um, Donaldson coming up and getting back his everyday role, I disagree with wholeheartedly. I think at the very most, he should be a supplementary piece. He should be playing third base to give DJ LeMahieu time off. He should be playing third base to give Anthony Rizzo time off because he's going to desperately need it at some point. Um, And I think that, you know, DJ goes over to first base and fills that role. That's the only reason I see Donaldson on this roster is to fill in and help mitigate fatigue, not to be an everyday role player um, where he's he's playing and starting on an everyday basis. I, I disagree with that entire notion. With Labor Torres, though, I think he's a long-term solution at this point in time. I like what I've seen offensively from him. I think defensively, he's had a couple of mistakes. I think the lazy narrative is overblown. I think it's nonsense. I think he makes mistakes because, you know, sometimes he's, he's error-prone. Uh, but altogether, like, he's not a bad infielder. Like, maybe even if he's an average infielder but an above-average offensive player, you're happy with that. Like, he has a he has a 115 WRC+, plus, maybe something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so he's above average in the offensive categories. He's on pace for, I think... 
29 homers this year or something like that after the two homers yesterday. Uh, he's he's performing well, man. He's not he has a career low strikeout rate. He's walking at a really nice clip. Um, he's getting fly balls, hitting opposite field. Like Labor Torres is doing everything you want him to. Um, and he's and he's not even a, a top five hitter in this on this team, guys. Like he's not even he's he's below. He, he he's in the five or six spot most days. So you're you're asking him to really boost the bottom half of this order, and that's where we need the most help. Um, so Labor Torres, you know, Ryan, I, I'll let you answer this question and kind of wrap up this entire discussion. What would be a reasonable contract? You would offer Gleyber Torres and you know maybe what kind of salary do you think he's earned up to this point based on his kind of polarizing nature yeah no um so it's gonna be really interesting to see the Gleyber Torres contract situation because you know as you mentioned he's kind of been up and down at times um he's an inconsistent guy but he's a good player so it's like you know do I think he's worth do I think he's worth like a hundred something million dollars? Maybe not. I mean, I don't know. It depends, right? Like what's the market looking like at, at that point in time? You know, I don't think he's going to get more of the market Simeon per se, right? But I don't think he's going to get like, you know, a two-year deal, like, you know, $15 million a year. I think we could see like a five-year, six-year deal because he's young. So that'll that'll definitely help him. So, you know, T may be willing to go more long-term for Glaber. Um, and, and, you know, close to like 90 to 95, maybe push the $100 million mark. Um, it, it, again, it'll depend on what the defense looks like at the end of the year. It'll depend on a lot of different factors, but Gleyber Torres is clearly a good hitter and he's in his prime. So that'll certainly help him too. Um, you know, I think the big thing with Glaber is, you know, as you mentioned, he's been someone who's been able to slot into this middle of the lineup and do a decent job. Um, you know, it's, it's been weird with like Bader playing so well, you know, is Bader legit? Is Bader not legit? Like we're still trying to figure that out. Um, you know, obviously Judge and Rizzo have had really good starts this season. Um, and those are your like four big guys right there. Those are the four guys who have done a lot of the damage for the Yankees in, in this, you know, hot stretch of baseball. Um, you just need someone else to contribute, right? You know, you, you need some other guys to step up. You need some other guys to kind of, um, fill out their roles a little bit better. Volpe's been a little up and down offensively. You expect that. Um, LeMahieu's been weirdly, like, terrible in the month of May. That's not what you expect. You wonder if it's an injury situation. Um, and then your left field situation is still bad. I know IKF's having a really good month, so actually I'm going to throw IKF in that as well. IKF's been an excellent month of May. Um, but... You know, it's one of those things where Glimmer Torrance has kind of consistently now just been able to give the Yankees good offense, and I think that has to amount for something. The Yankees are not – if if, if Glimmer Torrance would hit the IL right now, that would be a huge blow for the Yankees, and I think that's something that not enough people are talking about. Like, it's when you're that important to a lineup, when you're that important to a team, I think you can start pushing the conversation of, hey, you know, you're deserving of pretty substantial money. Um, and again, like, how many second basemen can hit the way he's hitting right now? Not many. Um, I'm going to just kind of take a – guess off the top of my head. I don't think there's more than like three or four second basemen with a higher WRC plus than Gleyber Torres um, that are full-time second basemen. And checking right now, um, yeah, no, it's not a large, it's, this is not a large list. Uh, there are a lot of guys here who either haven't played a lot um, or aren't qualified in terms of uh, plate appearances. Gleyber is just that good of a hitter. And I think so far we're seeing kind of, you know, an approach that's worked well for him. He's fifth in WRC plus among second basemen. Yeah. Um, and he's going to opposite fields. He's not striking out. He's working walks. It's kind of all coming together for him. It's just a matter of staying consistent and staying locked in from this point until the end of the season. Because if he does, man, he's going to earn himself a pretty hefty paycheck. Absolutely, my friends. But I'd love to hear your perspectives and thoughts, as always, in the YouTube comment section. Always appreciate that. Make sure to like and subscribe, as always. Make sure to leave a five-star review on Apple and Spotify. I appreciate that very, very much. Let's get a win today. We need one bounce-back game after last night. I mean, tough. Five, we're up 5-1, and you blow that lead. And, you know, it kind of all happened at once. Nestor Cortez, we talked about him kind of having an unexpectedly poor season. And, you know, unfortunately, our analysis kind of lived up to the fruition, and it kind of came to life, and that was unfortunate. We, have, we still have a lot of faith. And Nestor Cortez, it seems like everything kind of crashes around the third time around the order. Seventh inning, it just falls apart. Um, it's hard to tell why, but hopefully they can figure out what's going on or at least time his exit earlier. You know, at least time it out a little bit better. Maybe he comes out in the sixth inning and you lean on some of your bullpen arms and you kind of uh, strategize around that so you can avoid those big innings where, you know, Jimmy Cordero comes in and it just it just kind of continuously gets worse and worse and worse. But hopefully we can pick up a win today. But as I said, make sure to like and subscribe as always. We'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode. Thank you.